we go. We're back on. Yay! Look at that. Hurrah! Huzzah! Hmm. Cool. Can right, you, so where did we get to last time? Well, I was about to ask you something based on okay. Sega games. Because there were Sega games. But now, in the interim, I've gone to something slightly different, which I was going to ask you about. Because all the games that there are now in the arcades, you can now play on consoles, right? Yeah. And on PC. There's only one genre of games that still exist mainly in the arcade, and you don't get them very much at all if at all, on on as much as you used to on the consoles and the handhelds, which is shoot 'em ups. Okay, yeah. Did you ever like shoot 'em ups? And if so, what were your favourites? So when you say shoot 'em ups Spaceship, <sighs> endless waves of things coming at you. Usually scrolling either left and right. Yep. Or scrolling up and down. None of this sort of first person shooter. No, no, no. But things like, for example, using one, of, I'll give you one of my one of my favourites, R Type. Yep, you know, I remember R Type. Yeah, that kind of thing. Because you don't, you can get them now and again, but you don't get them as much as you used to on on game platforms now. I. But they were everywhere in the arcades. I, oh. It must have been an R-Type clone or a type of R-Type game mm. I played. They tend to... Um, Blur together. All, <laughs> yeah, all mould into one, really, because you are just doing the same sort of thing, backgrounds a little bit different each time. Yeah, I mean, there was... The the big one, after R-Type itself, the big one was um, from Konami called Nemesis, and its sequel, Salamander. Ooh. Where okay. you had where you had like um like a little fighter mach- fighter ship, and on that you would you would have you would collect coins or tokens or whatever they were little sort of balls, and then when you collected them, you had a little bar along the bottom which had your upgrades. So you had like you know laser, rapid fire, drone, you know shield, big blaster, and all that kind of stuff. And the more coins you picked up. That bar would move. The, the 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 option would light up further along, mm. and so you your bottle. It was kind of like a test of nerve. While you're fighting all these things, do you activate and use up all your coins to activate that upgrade, or wait and hopefully get another coin and get a more <laughs> powerful upgrade? And so you know, you know. So and if you liked, you could stack them up so you could get. Like your ship with the two little pods that would fly around the outside, and then if you got laser and you really waited, you know, you waited for five whole coins and got laser, you could have three things flying around you with the lasers going left and right and missiles going up and down. And it becomes very bright uh, once you're all upgraded, though, doesn't it? Lots and lots of lasers shooting from lots of different directions as well. Yeah, you kind of become your own worst enemy because you can't see the bullets coming at you because you've got so much other shit coming out of your ship. You can't see anything, mm. but um, but one that that Badger Spy brought up, and I just wondered if you see this one because you, I'm, I'd be very surprised if you hadn't. Defender. Hang on. What are you looking? Are you actually I, looking? Defender. I need to Google everything. Yes, I recognise Defender. That was crazy. That was like that was like blasting multiple million colours into your eyes. Every time something, because you had little tiny guys running along the bottom, and the aliens would come down and get them, and your ship could go left or right, and the whole <laughs> screen, and the whole screen would sort of scroll around in a big loop. Yeah, yeah. And it had all these kind of when you fired a laser beam, it'd be like one pixel thick, but it'd go rainbow colours based on how many times you fired, and so it would so you get like it would just turn into Technicolor hell. But you get all these kind of kind of noises going on, and it you just you would just and it would move at like a frame rate that you just was so fast. I recognise the um, the keyboard. Would you call it a keyboard? I'm not too sure. You call it. It's not a keyboard, but you know where the buttons are and yeah. the, the actual outlay. Yeah, it was the first game to have a smart bomb as well. Right. Okay. The idea of a smart bomb, the idea of just hitting that like panic kind of whack, and then watching the whole screen go white, and then everything just disappearing. 
See, I'm worried about um, getting my video games and arcade games mixed up, but I do remember there was a game where you could become an aeroplane and the second person was a car or a jeep on the floor. No, I don't. In that sort of sideways scrolling, lots of army stuff coming at you. Yeah, I think that might have been on 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 a sort of like on a games con, you know console, right? Because there was I don't recall ever seeing anything like that, but um, but I might be wrong. You know, the guys on Mixler may jump in and tell us straight away. But for me, that, all that kind of stuff there was there was the there was the World War Two one called nineteen forty two. Yeah, you were where you're like a sort of cross between some sort of weird biplane and and a and a Spitfire, but it could be upgraded to be firing in all directions. Then there was the car one, which I remember, which was Spy Hunter. Do you remember that? Right, um, hang on that a minute. Was, that was like a top-down racing game, but your car could shoot or drop oil or smoke, and it had them. And the music was um, yes, yeah. and I, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yes, Peter Gunn or, or yeah, it's like dun 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 dun. I remember the the um the controller for it. You're recognising things by controller. I can't even remember yeah. what the controller was. That the Peter Gunn thing. That's it, Sean. Cheers. Yeah, dun 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 dun. I think it's these games are so generic now and so hardwired into us when, mm. when we look back on them. There's so many games where they weren't licensed and they mm. just wanted to have their own version of this game. Mm. Yeah. Um yeah, Badger just chump, jumped on to Mixler and he just said um I think the one that Elton's thinking of with, with player 2 it, as a chopper um oh that's the one oh he's going I think that's the one with the player 2 as a chopper spy hunter but it's not he, he's just reminding me it's P- spy hunter 2. Spy, spy hunter, hunter 2. 2. Because it was the same deal, but you had a second player with a helicopter. Uh, I can't see any video of that. No, it's fine. It's fine. Don't, worry. Don't worry about it. I mean, it's just he just he just said something on on the mix layer, and I just jumped in and was like, "Yes, yeah. I remember now." But um, so you weren't really into the sort of like the straightforward up shooters kind of thing. I I quite like them. I like 1942 and all that sort of thing. I like that style of uh, game. Mm, mm. I find I can't get very far in it because I end up being my own worst enemy on it. But I do enjoy it. Mm. Um, I had R-Type on my computer as well, and I I used to love playing that. Yeah. Um, The thing is, I find, is it's repetitive. And it's very repetitive from the very outset of the game. Mm. And, you know, the last level will be the same as the first level. Mm. Just lots more bad guys and a different colour. But isn't that the same as all arcades at that around that time? It is, yeah. And that is what they're there for. They're there to give you they're there to take money off you. They're there to give you a, a quick thrill straight away. Mm. And you know, next time you might be able to get further. So you have to start again from the, you know, same place. Mm. And you know, that is kind of the joy and the bastard thing about arcades you know you can't mm. save your game anymore no well actually you say that there's right okay are you going to talk about dino rider yeah that bloody dino thing with where you got <laughs> cards i yeah. didn't know it was called dino rider but that bloody cards thing because i saw it where did i see it? i saw it in colchester zoo of all places mm-hmm where you're doing like fighting with dinosaurs and you put a card in the thing and it records your status, your update, your your work, how well you well you're doing or something, I don't know, but yeah, um I I've played the dino thing where you get a mm. card at the end of your game and you can continue from where you left off. Uh I think there's there's other games that do that now as well. Once again, it's just encourage it's getting into the mentality of our easy fix and where we got to last time that but, we, we take from home. Yeah. But isn't that wasn't that the joy of an arcade? Wasn't that a joy the joy of arcade games? That you would play it, you get your three lives, and if you did well, brilliant. And if you didn't, well fuck off. I mean Yeah, I th- I think so, because you would let's say, you know, with me and the Robocop, I'd put ten P in 
Mm. And I could do the first three levels, no problem, not lose a life. Mm. And in, have fun and enjoy that, the first three levels. Mm. Whereas, yeah. you know, if you just started on the bit where you died, mm. then you might not get as far and might not enjoy it as much. Yeah, and I don't, I mean, for me, there's, there's a, there's, I love the simplicity of a, of a game which is just unforgivable. I mean, it's like, there's, there's, Lots of people saying, oh, this is the hardest game I've ever played. This is the hardest game I've ever played. <laughs> on on things that are on the PS4 and the Xbox One and what have you. And it's like, dude, you can stop and save. You know, D- Dark Souls is really, really hard. Yeah, but you never actually, the game never ends. You die, you go back to a save point. Not That's not a problem. Something mm. like Ghosts and Goblins. Go, did you ever play Ghosts and Goblins, which is a platformer with a little knight running yes. across? Now, that was not just rock hard, but it was so hard that they actually formed diamonds out of the winning players. I mean, it was <laughs> fucking impossible. <laughs> you had to have timing like a gnat on speed to get around some of that stuff. But when you got past two levels, fuck me, you felt like a god. You, 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 it was like it was like manga. You would sort of be going like fire would be coming off of you, and your hair would go white, and you'd be like, Aah! "It's like playing um, Super." Is it Super Meat Boy nowadays? Yes, that's a very good point. Yeah, you can jump over the same blade a million times, mm. but that time that you just touch that pixel, mm. and it is pixel perfect, mm. and then you're dead. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You got done that time. Yeah, game over. Yeah, and you know, and it's quite funny that that kind of game. I mean, it's John McGowan saying on Mixler, no sense of achievement in gaming anymore. But then again, less game rage. But yeah. It, it, the thing is, Super Meat Boy is probably about as close as you get to an old sort of mid eighties, early late seventies, mid eighties arcade experience now, where you kind of like, I'm doing this because. You know, I'm that good, or as Badgers just said on the chat, games are easy now for millennials who demand a trophy just for playing. Yeah. You know, I just, I I love these games where it's just like, your skill is what gets you through. Not just because, you know, I've, you know, I'm, I'm oh, boo-hoo, I've played like five feet, I demand a save point. It's just, I don't know, I, lo- I love games that are super hard and you lose because you're shit, not because yeah. your game's cheating or whatever. Yeah, the game is pretty much the same all the way through. It's just got more bad guys and you you just can't cope with that. Yeah, you get overwhelmed and it's, yeah. it's your lack of skill. <laughs> um, in the chat, Sean did mention APB. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, he did, yes. I love that game. <laughs> the problem is... Cause that's another game where you can just sit on there and watch the demo and just hold the steering wheel and spin the steering wheel. Because I remember they had huge steering wheels. Probably, yes. probably about, they used to stick out about six inches. They had a yeah. real big, long steering wheel on them. Um, but I loved that game so much. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, APB, um, I was trying to think of, an, I'm trying to think of another one. Was, was, am I, Misread, misremembering this, or was again? This is where it's like, oh, or was this on like the sixty four or something like Night Rider? It was a Night Rider version. Night Rider. Mm. I don't know. Mm. See, wasn't Night Rider over by the nineties anyway? Yeah, but hold on. Oh, yeah, I'm just suddenly having a realization. You're talking about the nineties. I'm talking about the bloody late eighties. Mm. <laughs> oh shit. I've just suddenly aged about 400 years instantly. <laughs> um, quickly, quickly, let's talk about Outrun. There you go. Badger just said, don't remember Knight Rider, but did have Auto Man. Off-Road was also lots of fun. Yes, thank you. Yes, sorry, we're on to racing games, aren't we? Just yeah. realised. <laughs> did you Did you like racing games? I mean, obviously, I mentioned Daytona, but... I liked Daytona. Uh, I never really had anyone to play it with, though. Um, mm. there there was for a little while there was an arcade uh, down in Woolwich mm. uh, opposite the old NatWest Bank That's right. and in there they had naturally I would uh, 
find myself drawn to it. It was like a Formula One version of that Daytona game. Oh, oh God, yes, I know the what you I know the one you're talking about, but I can't remember the name of it. But yes, and you got the racing cars going over the bridge. Oh Christ, yes, big polygon, um, like uh, oh, San it, Francisco Golden Gate Bridge. Was it Indy Five Hundred or something? Like no, that? it wasn't Indy Five Hundred. No, no that, that was on the Amiga, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit, it's now turning into old people trying to determine whether or not their memories are real or not. <laughs> Podcast, <laughs> but I used to like that game, and yeah. just for the fact that I used to sit there watching the demo if I didn't have any money because I, I just used to sit there going, I want to play that, I want to play that, I really want to play that, I yeah. can't play it. Yeah. But <laughs> it was also one of the first games I noticed where it had gears as well. Yeah. And so all of a sudden you've gone from either just a steering wheel or pedals mm. to then, hang on, I've got gears, so you can either do automatic or manual. Okay, mm. Mm. challenge accepted. I shall go manual. Did you used to do manual? I, yeah. Oh, man, I could never Daytona, do... Daytona, I would do manual because you were clearly faster <laughs> on a manual gear, gear well, stick. With, with Daytona, yeah, because it wasn't that whole thing with the... You didn't have a really have a clutch. You just had to kind of just slide it one, two, three, four, five. But I remember um, the last proper racing game I ever played on arcades because... Since then, they just all become much of a muchness. But was um, was it a Sega Rally? Okay, yeah. And Sega Rally was literally like three D, all your lovely colours. It was starting to turn into the sort of thirty two bit generation. It was getting there, and it was in. It ended up on the Dreamcast and everything. But you could get special versions of it, and it literally had a clutch. I don't remember it having a clutch. No, I do there was, remember there was, there was the there was the one two three four five just sliding the the controller around, but there yeah. was one which was actually like like the body of a car. Oh, okay. And it, you you spent like five minutes trying to find the handle just to move your seat forward because some <laughs> bastard with six you know six foot tall would you know you know sixteen feet tall was sort of like with size eleven shoes and pushed the chair all the way back as far as it could go. Oh bloody hell I'd be like a uh, short round with boxes on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> no time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your favourite genre in arcades? I mean you, you keep going you went back to the beat 'em ups and, yeah, I, and the shoot 'em ups but I like the um I like the side scrolling um what would you call them? I can't remember the name of them now. Like the Mario type games. Oh, platformers. Yeah, the platformers. I like them. But I, I also like something with a good um like spherical type thing to use, like a, either a steering wheel or a gun that comes along with it. Ah, uh, so it's, and yeah, go on, sorry. So but yeah, I that's why I like Operation Wolf. That's why I liked Afterburner, where you could sit in it. Uh, mm. I think it's more uh, a toy thing, where you can get in there and actually play the toy. Did you ever play the um, Aliens arcade, where it was like Operation Wolf, but you had pulse rifles, and instead of pressing the button on the side for the grenade, you had to do the kind of slot it backwards and forwards to fire the grenade? No, because I would definitely remember that. It was mad, because it was just like, whenever you saw an alien, it was like you needed to basically empty your entire machine, in, in, to empty your entire gun into it. But it would always like throw waves and waves of face huggers at you. Right. No, I, no the, I think the closest I got to that was that haunted house game where you had the zombies coming towards you. House of you. the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I, is still really good. Yeah, they're all right. They're, they're, they're okay. Um Oh, was there a fishing game as well? I'm sure there was a, a I think, fishing type. Yeah, there wasn't there like Sega Sea Bass or something. Yeah, but I think that was on the Dreamcast. I don't actually think that was in the arcades. Right, because I know Dreamcast used a lot. They, they were just basically big Dreamcast uh, cabinets, weren't they? Oh, sorry, uh, Sean McGann's just jumped in saying Bass Masters. Bass Masters. Okay. Oh, it doesn't ring a bell. Um, never got into arcade fishing. <laughs> it didn't. Pick, it didn't pick up particularly well. People just would sit on the console for like seven hours and just eat some sandwiches. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> while while it randomly rained on your head for a four D experience. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> you had to and take the, a and shit the queue in a bush. would be the queue would be just people sitting in tents waiting for their go. <laughs> Yeah, occasionally you'd have to find some. <laughs> you have to find some, someone comes along and says, "Have you got a license?" You'd have to get up and run. <laughs> <laughs> We're go- going on the spherical things. Um, Pardon? <laughs> you know, like the the, the add-on yeah. type yes, guns yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what ones do you enjoy? Because I quite like um, like the punch bag things. I'm terrible at them, mm. but I like them. Uh, and there was also a game called Shocker, I think it was. <laughs> that, sound, that sounds like something when you throw your keys in a bowl. <laughs> oh, God, no. No. Right, I'm going to see if I can... <laughs> yeah, I know the one you're talking about where you had to hold on to the, the steel handles. I, I could do that. Mm. Yeah. I, that was one game I could beat in the arcades. There was no other game I could do. That's because you're and- earthed. You're so small, You're just there's no resistance down to the earth. No, no, it's not electrocuting you, though, is it, that game? Yeah. It, no, no, it's not. It's just violently vibrating the handles that you grip onto. And the more you grip, the harder it hurts. So you just hold onto it, you know, tightly, but then never let go. That's all it's doing is vibrating your hands. <laughs> it, it was never shocking you. Okay. But uh, that was one game I could beat because I could hold onto it and go all the way through. And it was brilliant. I... I thought I was the bee's knees. And then you get, like, smoke coming out the guy's ears at the top. And it, it had a light bulb in his mouth Yeah, that would, that would glow as well. Hmm. Interestingly, the shocker that I was thinking of was the one that Badger Spryce just put on the Mixler link, which is the wiki hand gesture shocker. Don't, don't look it up if you're under the age of about 105. <laughs> Not advised. But, um... Yeah, I, I, do you know what? For a lot of those peripheral games, especially like the ones with the punch bags, normally I wouldn't go anywhere near them because mm-hmm. I was too self-conscious. Um, <laughs> sorry, Sean's just posting something that was funny. Um, and it, it, you'd be too self-conscious that you were punching like a girl, if you want to put it that way, or just you'd get a terrible score you you're really putting yourself out there but there was the only one i did do was there was like a mega man or a superhero one where it was like a bar that would come up and it'd have a it'd have like um what looks like a sort of catcher's mitt big padded catcher's mitt and okay. you you'd have a boxing glove and you'd punch it and the harder you punched it there's a screen behind it which was the face of the bad guy and you basically had to demolish this guy to like he lost all of his teeth or his hair or, you know, you basically had to punch the taste out of his mouth, and right. you could choose who you were going to fight. So, um, and it was kind of like, so it was a bit pun, a bit like a fighting game. And every time you hit it, this this arm would go down, and it would slowly come back up. And you'd have to basically get him to sort of never come back up. You know, keep punching him until he stopped getting back up. I remember playing that a lot, but then that was when I had lots of anger issues. Uh, <laughs> I must have done at least 20 quid on that thing at one point. But um, but the only thing with other thing with peripherals that I even remotely liked was, um, was the motorcycle games where you'd race and you'd sit on the motorcycle and you'd kind of yeah. you'd lean it. You'd lean into the bends and all that kind of stuff. Jack Woodgate just said about my game that I was talking about the punching one said there's a version of the game where you could capture your own face on the screen oh why would you want to do that I don't know self-loathing <laughs> 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 yeah he's just said the same thing sense of self-loathing but um yeah, yeah motorcycle. the mo- motorbike ones were really good mm, yeah uh, I I uh, it was when we first moved up here, my boy wanted to have a go of one, but he was too small to get on it. Mm. And so I had to do that kind of pillion thing and lean over and hold him onto it. Yeah. And as you went over, you could feel him slipping over on the uh, mm. petrol tank. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> okay, grab him, and then sling it over to the other side, and then all of a sudden he's like, no, no, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Mm. Yeah. But did you, ever, did you ever cheat, or did you actually sit on it properly? Because... Once you got tall enough, you could sort of put your feet on either side and just sort of just lean it over as opposed to sort of putting your feet on the actual... 
I'm not tall enough for anything. Oh, Elton, you're not a smurf. You can no, still, I'm not. You can still reach the bloody pedals. I, I, that's the thing, though. They're built just big enough. So you, um, no, I'm not tall enough for, to reach the floor on them. Mm. Because it was that. They, they've got a brand new one, and I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called something like TT or something like that. And it, that's in uh, Brighton at the moment. But the, right next to it, and it's something that um, Badger brought up a little bit earlier, is horse racing. Okay. And you actually sit on the back of a horse. The horse's head's kind of not really there. You're kind of like, it's like handlebars. But you literally have to rock backwards and forwards. And your horse would ride faster the harder you sort of pushed it. <laughs> it's like, like going to a Millwall match, really. <laughs> Pretty much. Or one of those special clubs where you put money in ladies' thongs. Um, because I tell you what, it was it's another one of those games where you, people jump on it and go, oh yeah, horse racing, this would be really cool. And then you see after about two seconds of them working out exactly how they have to basically pelvic thrust the thing along the race course, <laughs> you sort of see on their faces like, shit, I've made a terrible mistake and I'm in a room full of 100,000 people. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Yeah. Uh, Sean McGowan going, yeah, you do talk like Mickey Mouse after it's over. It's like, oh, that was the best game I've ever played. I'm oh so boy. Glad. Oh boy. I, re- <laughs> I really wish, I really wish my balls would drop sometime soon when I find, oh, I've got enough money now to go again. <laughs> Did I win that match? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> now, the only horse racing game I've played uh, is. You have like the air hockey um, paddle and oh, yeah. uh, a slider, and you have to bash certain numbers. Uh, you have like a, a big square in front of you. You mm. put your money in, and uh, a big glass screen with horses behind it on like certain rails. Oh, a bit like whack a mole sort of thing. Kind of, yeah. And so you whack your puck, and it hits a number at the top of your square. Mm. Let's say five, and so your horse moves you know, mm. five. Mm. And then if you hit a two, your horse moves two. And you have to race against nine other people. And I quite enjoy them. Yeah, I, I like those ones. I mean, it's because they got them, because they got those, something very similar to that in, in sort of like when, when the carnival comes to town. <laughs> where you got someone sort of literally doing doing the voice you know, doing the sort of commentary going ah oh, but the number five is coming up on the left side side blah, 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 that's kind of it yeah yeah and you got like kids literally just tapping their own number in every time it lights up um yeah it's quite it's that that's quite fun when you when you're up for a bit of a bit of a more physical challenge because it's just quite one of those things where the guy's geeing you along and you're actually like come on i'm gonna press that button um, yeah. See, um, mm. Sean in the chat has said about air. He's he is the air hockey champion of the world. Is he really now? Really, I really. think everyone thinks that they're the air hockey champion of the world, don't yes, they? Exactly. Yeah, I think I. I was going to say anyone. Anyone can just smack it as hard as they can off the left hand side and hope the person's got their hand on the right hand side and watch it just disappear. <laughs> but is there anything funnier? than when you have kids watching you play air hockey and they put their fingers just over the edge. Oh, yeah. And you smack their fingers, <laughs> obviously, by accident. Obviously. Obviously. by, And then you see their bottom lip come out and you think, yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but it's also annoying because you have them people that do hover around you and you're like, I just want to play air hockey with my kid once. But they're like putting the money on the table, and there's like rules to putting the money on the table as well. And you think, oh, and then all of a sudden you're into politics of air hockey, mm. which oh, can be overwhelming at times. Yes, uh, it's like money being put down on the pool uh, table. Oh God, no! I'd, yeah, oh, winner stays on, or oh. is it winner stays on? You're not too sure. Yes, but I, I just want to play my girlfriend at pool. No, no, it's winner stays on, mate. What do you mean? It's weird. Oh, okay. So I have to lose to you now. Okay, now you're yeah. going to be the big man. Yeah. Or, or you're the first people on the pool table or the air hockey table and there's like a queue of people watching you and you're just, oh, no, go away. Go away. I'm the best, but go away. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, to be quite honest, when I've played air hockey, especially when the kids where you got to kind of go easy on them, 
rather than just give it a smack straight down the middle and watch them kind of wave their arms like some kind of sort of headless chicken. Um, where are, there's never been people sort of queuing up. I, I mean, I know I've seen it in other arcades, but normally that's not when I'm not when I'm playing. Mm. I mean, those kind of those kind of games are best enjoyed with a friend. You can't really go up against someone else, I don't think, because you just end up getting really cross. Or shit goes down where you kind of get distracted by their friends or they get distracted by yours and it just turns into a big faff. I just, that that's not, that's not what I, I don't like that at all. Well, it, it becomes bravado. Yeah, exactly. And, and for what? You know, just so you can say, oh, I managed to get my big plastic coin in your slot, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Huzzah. But, you know, but if I was playing you or Sean, by fucking Jingo, there'd be some shit talk going on. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, <laughs> money would be lined up on that side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Money, money would be lost. I don't know who mm. would lose it, but money would be lost. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe we should go to New York. Let's go to New York and play air hockey. Destroy Sean at air, air hockey. Yeah, British contingent. W- yeah, winner winner keeps America. Oh, easy, Christ! How how do we tie a rope onto America and drag it back? No, 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 we just bring a big cup of tea. Big, big tea <laughs> chest. <laughs> but, um, oh, by the way, can I just say, by the way, because I'm seeing this on Mixler and I know this is not kind of related, but, um, Mr. Badger, um, keeps, isn't, <laughs> Sean's going, isn't that the plot to Rocky 3? <laughs> but, um, wasn't it 4? I will destroy you. Um, was it four? Or four three? is Dolph Lundgren, the yeah, best one. I think that's the one. That's not the best one. Shut it up. is the best one. Shut up. It Ooh. is the best one. I've proved it on Shonky Lab. Yeah, on your own. That's yeah. shit after two. Thank you, Sean. Thank I'll you. give over. God dear, you and your demolition man, love. Jesus, Elton. That, <laughs> the one with the fucking robot. <laughs> 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 um, But all I was going to say was... Mr. Mr. Badger Spry, it's, while we're talking about arcade games and video games, Mr. Badger Spry has been giving us shit, yeah, giving me mm. shit about a, about a game called Speedball, which we have just previously mentioned, I think, in part two. Yeah, ice cream, ice cream. He keeps going on about it being he's been the Speedball champion of the world. Yeah. Okay. Can I just say first off? That in my prime with speedball, I could finish a whole game or get so far ahead that I could basically annihilate even the computer in 30 seconds. Okay? That's the first thing. Then he came along. He got a copy of it on the Xbox. He was giving it all the the big ups. (laughs) He was giving the big ups at his house. He went, okay, I'm going to win. And I literally tore him, not just a new one, but I literally left a hole in his carpet looking through to the floor below. <laughs> so now, I was just... this on Speedball or Speedball 2? Well, it was Speedball 2. So right. That's what it is, and that's what he's talking about. Speedball champion of the world. I will say this now. If he wants to ca- come back and have a public Speedball game, I'll anytime, anywhere, as long as it's not that stupid rehash where they did speedball in 3d because that was shit and it didn't work but speedball 2 mr badger the the challenge is down i will break you to use a rocky four metaphor um, well, i think i think you've just come up with a brilliant subtopic for the next shonky lab you know I'll, I'll be dishing out champions of the world champ- next time yeah nice champions yeah. of the world so you have to phone up and then choose what you want to be champion of and mm. then that's it you are it Mm, yes. Well, it's too late to do it on here now, though. No, let's not do it now. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I would much rather be um, Ball Blazer, which is on Commodore 64, which is not an arcade game. Well, you'll have to phone up next time. Phone up? Yeah, yeah, that's them's the rules, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, where were we? Uh, well, we've done... Some motorbikes and APB mm-hmm. um, add-ons. Mm-hmm. Do you, okay. Do you agree with um, what's it called, Guitar Hero? No, not in the arcade. Mm. Yeah, it's... okay. Because that is kind of the arcades went into our front rooms, 
and now our front room games are going into the arcades. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's that it, you know, it's what we were saying earlier. It's it's that whole thing of when the arcades had the technology to beat the consoles, everyone went to the arcades. Then when the consoles caught up and then overtook them, and then the PC gaming all started, the arcades just sort of emptied. So now it's kind of like the fight back is essentially getting games that you play on your PC and on your phone and everything in the arcade. Mm. So you've got things, like I say, there's a Jetpack Joyride, um, there's there's Fruit Ninja, there's Bejeweled, there's, as you say, Guitar Hero. And it's like, hold on, why am I paying a pound to play a game that I've got on my phone? Yeah. That I can have forever for a pound. <laughs> but, um... But- yeah, you- while you're in line, you can still play that game. <laughs> yeah, and probably get better. Oh, God. Um, massive multiplayer arcade machines like 8-player X-Men. There was an 8-player X-Men? That's what Badger's claiming. I don't remember that one. I remember right. the 4-player one, which was a bit like, yeah, sort of... Oh, God, what was it? the um, bit like your Golden Axes and your Double Dragons and all that kind of thing. Yeah, see, I remember the four-player stuff, like the Golden Axes, Turtles, and then the four uh, uh, car games linked together. I have seen, and there is one nearby me, where you have two of them linked together. Mm. So you've got eight cars ready to go. That's as big as it ever got for me. That's mm. the biggest I've ever seen. So, you know, eight-player arcade, that is just one huge... Yeah, you know, machine mm. to stand around. Yeah, actually, Badger just backed up and said it was six, not eight. But that's still huge. That's still a lot of people. That is, yeah. I don't remember it. I'll be honest with you. Hmm. Um. Oh, is well. that like Smash Brothers or something? No, I, I, like I say, I, I vaguely remember the X Men game being like a sort, like a, a Golden Axe altered beast clone. You know, the, the, the sort of. Double Dragon, Streets of Rage, Streets of Fire, is it Street of Rage? Streets of Rage, where you're sort of, you're walking left to right, you're, you're, oh, and he's going, look at it, look at it, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> there you go, it's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, what, it's just, why, why would you, you wouldn't, you, the, the chances of you getting six people around a machine, really, and the chances of someone turning up who's an arsehole who's just going to jump in there and just take one of your coins or your your extra mm. coins and go, okay, fine, I'll I'll just play this until you all go away. I just, no, I don't know. That that's community gaming too far. Yeah, that is a game where you do need another five friends to play that. That's not you're <laughs> you're not going to be the person who stands there on his own playing that game, are you? Hmm. Yeah, no, not really. Yeah, you don't want to be the one standing in the middle doing being Cyclops, but you can't actually do anything beyond shooting people with your eyes. It's just boring. Everyone will want to be Wolverine. It'd just turn into a fight, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, with with going back to your the the Guitar Hero, have you ever played it in the arcade? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Um, I pretty much got the same experience that I did when I played it on uh, at home or around a friend's house. Right. Which uh, is... Which, which is, is, I found out that I'm not a Guitar Hero fan. Don't like it at all. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, Guitar Hero is one of those games which is either you, you either play it in a group and you go, this is quite funny because you, you're trying, or you just go, enough's enough, this is boring. I just don't. So I don't see how you play it in an arcade. We've already said it. it's like it's about ten thousand decibels in there, isn't it? How do you hear the music? Well, it's just louder than everything else. <sighs> yeah, but even so, no. But it, it's one of them units where you have to stand off from the screen. The screen is going to be at least a hundred inches. Mm. It's a big old screen, and then you've got the uh, big. Uh, Guitar stands where you can you know, put your axe down and then pick it up from, and <laughs> nice. I don't know. It just does no. It just doesn't appeal to me. Mm. You know, have you ever seen videos of people playing uh, Guitar Hero? 
Um, yes, because um, funny enough, I used to go. We had one one evening. We went round to Badgers, Mister Badgers Prize, and we played Rock Band, which is very similar. We all dressed up as um <laughs> as different rock stars. I'm sure if you are the rock star doing it, um, mm. playing the game, it's fine. But when you're the person on the outside watching the other people watch the screen, it's a very different experience. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's pretty boring. I mean, did did you used to like doing that? I mean, sort of being the sort of standoff bystander watching other people play the game? Playing a game, any game? I think that's my default mode, only because I didn't have that much money. Mm. It was very hard. Once you're given your allowance and once that's gone, yeah, then you become the lurker. Yeah. And hoping for, you know, looking around for uh, 10p on the floor yeah. or 2p on the floor and were you, you save were you, up these 2ps to maybe change them into 10ps. Yeah. Were you the lurker that would stand behind someone while they're playing or were you one of those lurkers like I was, I'm afraid, where you kind of, you, you kind of hang off the side of the cabinet? <laughs> you know what I mean? So your fingers are just clasped on the edge of the cabinet, and your head's just coming round from the side, from the left or the right. I think I've been both. Yeah, definitely. I I do like to watch and see what other people are doing. Mm. Uh, see, with the roller coaster arcade things, where you can put two quid in and then have a roller coaster ride. I've I've stood there clutching the machine watching that mm. and you know they're quite good or well, you do get a, a certain experience off of them mm. uh but i tend to not get in the way of people because i know how frustrating and annoying it is mm. yeah i mean i don't I, you just brought up the uh, the sort of roller coaster thing i've seen a couple of those i don't see the point why not just get in a simulator or, better yet, spend the money going on a roller coaster? Well, sometimes you're not in that vicinity of a roller coaster. We have one down in our local bowling lane. What, a roller coaster? No, not a roller coaster, <laughs> a roller coaster simulator. <laughs> I was going to say, how big is your fucking bowling lane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of these roller coaster simulators. It's two quid a go. Mm. And so it's a, okay, if you're going on that, you're not going on anything else and you don't get any food. Mm. <laughs> and I I think Kimmy jumped off of it because she didn't like it. And so I, I poked my head around and it did look really good. You did get some sort of uh, motion to it. Mm. It did trick your mind. Yeah. Uh, but then you feel, you know, rotten and green around the gills after. Yeah. Cool. Hold on. I've just noticed it's gone buffering. What's gone buffering? On the uh, Mixler. Was it? Yes. I don't know. Maybe okay. something's gone wonky with your with your internet. No, oh, it could be my internet, yeah. It sounds... I don't know why, though. Because you suddenly went a bit squawky, squawky. Oh, okay. Oh, and we can still hear you. Goes. Yes, apparently everyone can still hear. Hello, everyone. Sorry to... Let's do that. It's probably just me buffering then. You're sounding a little ropey at the moment. Yes, so am I. Sorry, you rather. Oh, so am I. Yes. Hi. Hello. Anyway. Well. We're... Right. Well, we've only got 15 minutes left on this third. I don't think we're going to go into a fourth hour. No. Because that's just crazy. That's just crazy talk. Yeah. Um, that... Is there anything you want to cram in on this last 15? Um. Only, um, did you did you ever play arcade games based around films? See, we did, we did, we did talk about Star Wars, mm. but there is a Jurassic Park shoot 'em up. Oh, there is didn't a Termin- like that Terminator shoot 'em up. Yeah, you know, with the with the guns and everything, um, and aliens, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I think there was a Rambo one as well. I remember playing the Jurassic Park one because we you got into a car. Mm. Yeah. Or one of the Jeeps that they use yeah, the, around Jurassic the, Park. Uh, um, I'll ask. Um, mm. uh, but Jack Woodgate just jumped in and said, as a good question, 
What initials did you use on your high scores? <laughs> did you go oh. did you go for an actual initial or did you go for bum ass dick D I K D I K anything like that or tit as Jack's just put down? <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to do the rude ones. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> did you ever get a high score? Because Badger wants to know. Yes, I did. Yes. Uh, for some weird reason, the pub me and Amanda used to go in where we met, mm. they, around about two years after we started going down there, they brought in the Konami uh, football game. Oh, yes. And I was very good at it. Humble it, brag. Yeah, go on. I was very, very good at it, and I did get high scores. And people used to play as Brazil to get the World Cup, and there was me. Okay, and I'm going to be patriotic and be England. Hmm. And I used to get the high score. Wow. Wow. Also, while I'm bragging, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know the golf game that we said about the, the rollerball? Yeah. I did get a hole in one on one of them once. And Amanda saw that, so she can verify that as well. Nice. Hole in one. Well yeah. done. Because oh, Sean's just said, if he got a high score, it was SMG. Um, if it was bullshit score, then they used fuck, tick, or cock. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, no, the initials I used were EJM, like my full initials. Oh, right. Badger was guessing that you put ELT. Yeah, I did now and again, but it was more EJM. Ah, uh, right. Well, I, I always used to go with um, LJM. Um, I only ever got high scores on things which had only just been switched on. <laughs> so, so like your Tron game, and um, but the only one I was very, very proud of was um, because I think it was a golf game. I'm pretty sure it was a golf game in Australia when we were in Australia. It was quite a while back. Um, was it Carol's uncle took us to a a golf club for a dinner, which was very nice. You know, sort of really, really plush kind of place. Mm. Um, we'd only just been recently married, and they all went off for a little wander around the grounds while we were waiting for food to turn up. And I went, I went to the toilet. But then what happened was, I said, "Oh, I'll catch you up." And as I walked out of the toilet, there was this arcade machine. Um, oh, Melissa wants to know what J stands for in your name, Elton. Um. But anyway, <laughs> we'll get back to that in a sec. Um, and I came out, and it turned out the actual score on the golf machine was actually network linked to all the other golf machines of that type. Right. So the score was like a scoreboard of 1,000. The top 1,000. And I actually I put some coins in, and I didn't get very far, and I had to leave it, and it timed out because you oh, if you don't do anything. But I did the first four holes... And I got on the scoreboard just with the four holes. And I thought, right. that's brilliant. That's gone around the world. Actually, it prob- look, looking at it, it probably meant that there was only like five or six machines around the golf club. But I was quite pleased with that. That was like a, a humbling experience. Yes. Against the whole world, as I thought. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, where well, our sounds going a bit apparently. Yeah, I think it is a little bit. Yeah, but um, yeah. So and my and my initials are usually LJM or CNT, depending on how well I've done. <laughs> I I just spell that out in my head. Then just <laughs> wonder wonder what, what 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 does that mean? Oh oh, that's the worst word. <laughs> yeah, but no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> unless you say, unless they know you, it's you. So it was either LJM or CNT. <laughs> there you go. Oh dear, there's I'll only let... so many words you can get out of them, isn't there? Yeah, but it's it's right. more about the pronunciation. If you go phonetically, you're fine. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. You naughty man. Yes. Right, I think we're running to the end now. Yes, I think so. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, Thank you very much for joining me, Lee. No, not a problem at all. It was brilliant. I honestly had a wonderful time. Um, so have I. I hope everyone else has enjoyed listening to it. Um, Certainly seems like it. 
though Badger's a bit upset that I never I have a three letter name first name and actually never used it in the high school tables you were built for it yeah shame but, on you but <laughs> but there's hundreds of lees there's only one cnt in the world <laughs> uh, anyway go on clive nigel taylor really hates you at the moment yeah he, he's yeah <laughs> he's he's going around kicking chairs and his ears are burning <laughs> 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 oh, oh dear. dear right well do you want to plug your wares while we're still here and we've got you know less than 10 minutes to go <laughs> yeah sure you can hear me and you yep and jim and elton on the black dog podcast i am elton yeah oh that's right you, you well. sorry you were just an anonymous voice down the line i didn't know who you were um no, you can hear me and you and Jim and Darren on the Black Dog Podcast, which you can find on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, geekplanetonline.com, in all good bookshops, possibly down the back of the sofa if you look hard enough. And um, yeah, and uh, join us on the Facebook group as well, which is facebook.com slash groups slash the Black Dog Podcast. Excellent. There you go. Right, so... Um Thank you, everyone, in the Mixler chat room. Do you know yes. what? It's been brilliant. It has. It has. It's been absolutely wicked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Doreen uh, did say about the tents in the queuing up for the bass thing. Yeah, were, they leopard, uh, were they zebra stripes? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> be, be good, though. Be good. Mm, yes. Well, uh, you know, I still, do, I still think... Every time I hear you on, and I don't actually see you, I just see, I just imagine in my head that you're still sitting in your little zebra tent. I do have that poncho still. <laughs> It'll come out in bad weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's not next to a lion's cage again next mm. time. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's always a bit foolish. Yeah. Cool. Well, everyone's okay, everyone's so, saying thank you, by the way. Um, what is up in the black dog? Next week. Next week we finish our four weeks of horror, which has lasted eight weeks, <laughs> with with the um, African zombie film The Dead. And then after that we've got Clerks, and then we're into the Christmas films. Hooray! Oh, God. Good stuff. Well, what I'll try and do, I'll try and do one more Shonky Lab before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a, a, just a, a get-together of people that want to join in and talk um, I might even do like a solo one where people can just jump aboard. I'm not yes. too sure how that would work, but I'd like to do it. I think it'd be good. We can bring like um, crisps and dips and maybe our toys in as well, like end of term type thing. Nice. Can, can we um, can we bring in our playstations and and our game game boys and? No, no, no electronic games. Uh, Mouse trap is all right. Ludo's all right. Um, and uh, twizzle attack. sticks. <laughs> Twizzle Please. sticks. Yes. Well, oh, fucking hell! One minute I think you're the you're you're much younger than me, and then five minutes later, all right, you sound like a Victorian dad <laughs> with my pantaloons. Yes, <laughs> fancy crisps. Don't forget the fancy crisps. Yeah, yeah. Like we, I've got a video of fancy crisps from the other week. I don't. I don't want to show. I don't want to share it anymore because it's quite disgusting. And poor old Darren got the right wrong end of it without knowing it. Now, we bring Fancy Crisps on the Black Dog the last uh, episode of the year. What, we saving Christmas? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? I'm going to bring Fancy Crisps. Anyway. You know, it was gonna, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna shit in a bag and throw it at me when you see that film. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it for its deliberate awfulness. Oh, good on you. Oh, great. Anyway. All anyway, right, so yeah, I'm going to close it off here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, everyone, for downloading as well. Everyone mm. in the chat room, you still have to download. That's your duty. That is your you know, privilege, but also your duty to uh, the Shonky Lab. Mm. Uh, and yeah, spread the word if you wish. Mm. Thank you very much, and we'll catch you later. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>
There we go. We're back on. Yay! Look at that. Hurrah! Huzzah! Hmm. Cool. Can right. You, so, you where did we get to last time? Well, I was about to ask you something based on okay. Sega games because there were Sega games. But now, in the interim, I've gone to something slightly different, which I was going to ask you about. Because all the games that there are now in the arcades, you can now play on consoles, right? Yeah. And on PC. There's only one genre of games that still exist mainly in the arcade, and you don't get them very much at all, if at all, on on as much as you used to on the consoles and the handhelds, which is shoot 'em ups Okay, yeah. Did you ever like shoot 'em ups And if so, what were your favourites? So when you say shoot 'em ups Spaceship, <sighs> endless waves of things coming at you, usually scrolling either left and right yep. or scrolling up and down. None of this sort of first-person shooter. No, no, no. But things like, for example, using one of, I'll give you one of my, one of my favourites, R-Type. Yep, you know, I remember that, R-Type, yeah. That kind of thing. Because you don't, you can get them now and again, but you don't get them as much as you used to on, on game platforms now. I, but they were everywhere in the arcades. I, oh, it must have been an R-Type clone or a, a type of R-Type game mm. I played. They tend to... Um, Blur together. All, <laughs> yeah, all mould into one, really, because you are just doing the same sort of thing, backgrounds a little bit different each time. Yeah, I mean, there was... The the big one, after R-Type itself, the big one was um, from Konami called Nemesis and its sequel, Salamander. Ooh. Where okay. you had where you had like um like a little fighter mach- fighter ship, and on that you would you would have you would collect coins or tokens or whatever they were little sort of balls, and then when you collected them, you had a little bar along the bottom which had your upgrades. So you had like you know laser, rapid fire, drone, you know shield, big blaster, and all that kind of stuff. And the more coins you picked up. That bar would move. The, the 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 option would light up further along, mm. and so you your bottle. It was kind of like a test of nerve. While you're fighting all these things, do you activate and use up all your coins to activate that upgrade, or wait and hopefully get another coin and get a more <laughs> powerful upgrade? And so you know, you know. So and if you liked, you could stack them up so you could get. Like your ship with the two little pods that would fly around the outside, and then if you got laser and you really waited, you know, you waited for five whole coins and got laser, you could have three things flying around you with the lasers going. I think the one that Elton's thinking of with, with player two it, as a chopper. Um, oh, that's the one. Oh, he's going. I think that's the one with the player two as a chopper, Spy Hunter. But it's not. He, he's just reminding me. It's P- Spy Hunter two. Spy, Spy Hunter, Hunter two. two. Because it was the same deal, but you had a second player with a helicopter. Uh, I can't see any video of that. No, it's fine. It's fine. No. Don't, worry. Don't worry about it. I mean, it's just he just he just said something on on the mix layer, and I just jumped in and was like, yes, "Yeah, I remember now." But um, so you weren't really into the sort of like the straightforward up shooters kind of thing. I, I quite like them. I like 1942 and all that sort of thing. I like that style of ge- uh, game. Mm, mm. I find I can't get very far in it because I end up being my own worst enemy on it. But I do enjoy it. Mm. Um, I had R-Type on my computer as well, and I, I used to love playing that. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I find is it's repetitive. And it's very repetitive from the very outset of the game. Mm. And, you know, the last level will be the same as the first level. Mm. Just lots more bad guys and a different colour. But isn't that the same as all arcades at that around that time? It is, yeah. And that is what they're there for. They're there to give you... They're there to take money off you. They're there to give you a, a quick thrill straight away. Mm. And, you know, next time you might be able to get further. So you have to start again from the you know same place. Mm. And... You know, that is kind of the joy and the bastard thing about arcades. You, know, you can't mm. save your game anymore. No. Well, actually, you say that, there's 
Nintendo games and arcade games mixed up, but I do remember there was a game where you could become an aeroplane and the second person was a car or a jeep on the floor. No, I don't. In that sort of sideways scrolling, lots of army stuff coming at you. Yeah, I think that might have been on 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 a sort of like on a games con, you know console, right? Because there was I don't recall ever seeing anything like that, but um, but I might be wrong. You know, the guys on Mixler may jump in and tell us straight away. But for me, that all that kind of stuff there was there was the there was the World War Two one called nineteen forty two. Yeah, you were where you're like a sort of cross between some sort of weird biplane and and a and a Spitfire, but it could be upgraded to be firing in all directions. Then there was the car one, which I remember, which was Spy Hunter. Do you remember that? Right, um, hang on that a minute. Was, that was like a top-down racing game, but your car could shoot or drop oil or smoke, and it had them. And the music was um, yes, yeah. and I, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yes, Peter Gunn or, or was, yeah, he's like dun 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 dun. I remember the the um the controller for it. You're recognising things by controller. I can't even remember yeah. what the controller was. That the Peter Gunn theme. That's it, Sean. Cheers. Yeah. Dun 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 dun. I think it's these games are so generic now and so hardwired into us when, mm. when we look back on them. There's so many games where they weren't licensed and they mm. just wanted to have their own version of this game. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Badger just jump, jumped onto Mixler and he just said. Um, I have to write and missiles going up and down and it becomes very bright uh once you're all upgraded though doesn't it lots and lots of lasers shooting from lots of different directions as well yeah you kind of become your own worst enemy because you can't see the bullets coming at you because you've got so much other shit coming out of your ship <laughs> you can't see anything mm. but um but one that that Badger Spy brought up and I just wondered if you see this one because you I'm, I'd be very surprised if you hadn't Defender. Hang on. What are you looking? Are you actually I, looking? Defender. I need up? to Google everything. Yes, I recognise Defender. That was crazy. That was like that was like blasting multiple million colours into your eyes every time something because you had little tiny guys running along the bottom, and the aliens would come down and get them, and your ship could go left or right. <laughs> and the whole screen, and the whole screen would sort of scroll round in a big loop. Yeah, yeah. And it had all these kind of. When you fired a laser beam, it'd be like one pixel thick, but it'd go rainbow colours based on how many times you fired. And so it would, so you get like it would just turn into Technicolor hell. But you get all these kind of <laughs> kind of noises going on, and it you just you would just and it would move at like a frame rate that you just was so fast. I recognise the um, the keyboard. Would you call it a keyboard? I'm not too sure. If you call it. I don't know. It's not a keyboard, but you know where the buttons are and yeah. the, the actual outlay. Yeah, it was the first game to have a smart bomb as well. Right. Okay. The idea of a smart bomb, the idea of just hitting that like panic kind of whack, and then watching the whole screen go white, and then everything just disappearing. See, I'm worried about um, getting my video.